Welcome to this session techies. My name is Yogesh. In this session, we are going to talk about AWS EC2 instances EME support. So things we will be discussing the configure and enable enhanced networking support for ENA adapters on RHEL or CentOS 6 or server. First of all, uh, we need to know what is ENA. So ENA stands for Elastic Network Adapter. It is next generation network interface which is capable to provide enhanced networking features on EC2 instances. This particular network interface delivers high throughput, a high performance and consistently low latencies on EC2 instances. But uh, to gain maximum network throughput from the ENA supported EC2 instances, ENA driver must be loaded in the system. Also, we need to make sure we have enabled enhanced networking feature at the instance level. But this feature requires ENA driver to be available in the instance operating system. Uh, one thing I want to share with you, the ENA driver is not by default included in RHEL 6 or RHEL 7. As on date, uh, we got uh, RHEL 7.4, sorry, 7.3 latest, but, uh, Red Hat is planning to release 7.4 soon, but uh, till 7.3, ENA driver or module is not part of default kernel. And as per Red Hat, that is not supported. They are not supporting it. So in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to discuss the steps. By following those, you can enable ENA driver support. But again, uh, Please be noted that uh, Red Hat will not support ENA driver. So please consider your support restrictions. Another good thing, when you enable ENA support, for example, I did that on i3 xlarge server. Without ENA support, I was getting uh, this particular max network bandwidth, 6.46 gigabit per sec. When I enabled ENA support. I was getting 10.1 gigabit, which is the max I can get. And you can see the difference. My network capabilities were improved by 60%. So that's something really good. Uh, again, uh, with Amazon AMI, they support ENA by default. With Ubuntu, I'm not sure uh, what's the Ubuntu standard, but again, with Red Hat, that is something which is uh, unsupported. And personally, I feel that's very bad. But again, uh, if we are running our test instances, we can test it. Uh, if you are happy with this approach at your own risk, you can follow this method. And again, I'm not going to do something wrong. I'm going to get the driver from Amazon. That's Amazon provided DNA driver. And uh, I'm going to use uh, DKMS, which is dynamically dynamic kernel uh, uh, to modify the kernel. So let me quickly demonstrate what we are going to do. Here, uh, I will be following these steps. First, I will be enabling uh, dynamic kernel module support. And that part is, uh, DKMS is part of EPL repository. So, first I will be adding uh, EPL repo, repo on my Linux machine. After that, uh, I will be downloading ENA driver. Uh, before that, uh, I will be running uh, kernel level installation. Then using git clone, I'm downloading the latest Amazon driver for ENA. Then I'm going to follow this particular procedure. Once everything is done, I will uh, uh, do mk init rd, which will uh, create my new init RAM disk. After that, I will power off my instance because uh, to enable ENA feature at instance level, instance need to be in powered off state, or you can say it need to be stopped in Amazon words. So after stopping it, I will run this command EC2 modify instance attribute dash dash instant ID. Here I will type my instance ID, then dash dash ENA dash support. When I press enter, it will enable my ENA support. How I can verify whether that ENA support is enabled inside operating system? Simply I can run each tool dash I it's zero. It will tell me what is the network driver I'm using. If I'm using ENA driver, that's well and good. And that's our end goal. So let's quickly jump to technical session where I can demonstrate uh, these steps to you. 
okay this is my amazon management console i have uh, just launched one i3 large instance this is the instance id this is the public ip that's i3 so i3 basically supports uh, ena if you want to know which particular instance supports ena or uh, which in instances support SRIOB which is another virtualization technique for networking uh, you can refer Amazon uh, page where it describes all the instance types which support uh, the particular features so I'm just grabbing the public IP here this is public IP so let me connect to this instance now okay so SSN GC2 user I've already configured my own keys on uh, all the ec2 instances so i'm just log again as you see to use it okay i'm in i'm elevating my privileges to root okay i'm root now so let me quickly perform these steps as i mentioned in my theory session uh first thing we have to ensure that uh, kernel and kernel dash devil they are both on same level then only you can use TKMS uh, in a good way. So let me quickly check that. Okay, so my kernel is on uh, this particular 514. Let me quickly install TKMS first. Sorry, uh, I want to install kernel dash devil. So installation okay there is no such package uh, i can install latest one uh, but uh, before that i want to upgrade uh, all packages on this system that's better to do patching so i'm just simply doing yum update minus y so this is i3 speed is good it got uh, good compute power so patching still going on I believe it will finish in a couple of seconds now. Okay, guys, uh, so patching is completed. We have upgraded uh, our OS. So let me clear screen quickly. Now let's run our next step to install uh, EPEL repository. Okay, so I have installed uh, EPL repo. Let's install DKMS. Before installing DKMS, I want to show you how driver looks like now. Right now, if you see it is using WIF, which is virtual interface, that's a default one on Amazon instances. And our end goal is to use ENA driver here. Okay, so let's install DKMS. Okay, DKMS is installed, this one. So your next step uh, is to install a kernel devil package and uh, we have to install git because I'm going to do git clone from Amazon repository. That's the reason I'm installing git here. So git is installed and uh, kernel devil. Let me quickly have a look on kernel devil. Okay, we got kernel devil version 5.1.4 and uh, the main package which is kernel that is same so that's good we are on same kernel so it is matching if you see we are on uh, kernel revision 514 and kernel devil is also 514 so that's good uh, next thing i'm going to clone from amazon's uh, git repo I'm just downloading the driver. It's downloaded. If you see this particular directory, Amazon drivers. I'm moving it to user source where I'm going to compile it later. Okay, it's moved. Next thing, I have to create a DKMS configuration file where I'm going to define uh, the parameters for uh, this particular driver to be configured. So, VI. Yeah. Escape I here. I'm adding these entries. These are the defined entries which I got from one of the Amazon tech note Okay, so that's good 
here uh, this is a package version 1.0.0 that's again amazon package okay so this is done next thing let's add the amazon driver source code into dkms it's added it's created simply so it looks good next step is to build this driver to build it dkms build minus m amazon drivers minus v version okay here it gave error the error is uh, this particular development kernel can't found 3.10514 so reason being uh, we are on kernel 5.14 let's run kernel again yeah let's grab kernel kernel demo 3.10.2 okay mm, i believe uh, i found the issue because uh, this is the latest kernel which got uh, upgraded with the patching if you see this is the old one 514 but the latest one is 514.10.2 so it means we have to reboot our server quickly so let me reboot it this is amazon instance and that's i3 it may come up in uh, one minute so i'm just pausing this video for that particular duration okay so instances back up and become root quickly so i will start from same command which was uh fairly this build command because we have already added uh, into dkms the amazon driver thing if you see build is completed uh, this time so that's good uh, let's install it quickly dkms install Okay, it is saying it's already done, so that's good. Uh, let's create uh, initRD image using mkinitRD command. So it is doing stuff. It may take a couple of seconds. So that's good. Uh, pretty image file done. So it is going smooth as of now. So let's wait it to finish. Okay, it's finished. So it created this particular init RT image file now for uh, rel 7. Uh, now next step is to shut down the instance and uh, change uh, or enable the enhanced networking support at uh, instance level basically at amazon ec2 level uh, before reboot again uh, i have already demonstrated this thing with it too like right now it is using web so end goal is ena driver so let me power off the server now and it's zero and uh, next thing we have to do we have to enable enhanced networking support at instance level for that i'm going to use uh, ec2 modify instance attribute dash dash instance id so let me quickly grab instance id from uh, the console i can get it uh, within instance but uh, i have already powered off my instance so uh, I'll, i have to get it from here now otherwise you can uh, query metadata store which is 169.254.169.254 and you can get uh, instance id but instance is down so this is the best way i can run ec2 describe instances command to get the detail but uh, i got this information handy so here modify instance attribute instance id this one dash dash enable sorry dash dash ena dash support press enter okay if you see uh, this command is finished and let's quickly verify to test whether uh, this feature got enabled or not i can run describe instances it's always good to verify whether it got enabled or not i can directly boot my instance and check within operating system but this is something which is recommended for and i'm querying uh, reservation and dna support so it will okay it need to be instances here let's hope it works this time okay if you see 
ENS support is true now. It means it is enabled. So I can start my instance. So let's boot instance using command line. Start instances dash dash instance ID. So this will power on my instance. So earlier it was stopped, which we know we have stopped uh, it intentionally to enable this feature. Now it is pending state. Let's read in this command. I just want to show you it will show it was like in which state it was running now still running. So let's quickly connect to this instance. Maybe operating system is booting. Uh, so let's wait for a couple of seconds for OS to boot. This time uh, Amazon changed the public IP of my instance because I'm not using my direct connector on my own VPC. So this is something I have to check on regular basis. This is my new IP for same instance. Let me connect. Okay, I'm connected. Let me become root. Okay, I'm root now. Let's validate now. Okay, as I mentioned, I run command. It's tool dash I, it's zero. If you see now driver is ENA, earlier it was VIF, VIF mean virtual interface. This is ENA, which is enhanced networking adapter. So it means our goal is accomplished. We have enabled ENA support. So that's something you can do. But again, uh, keep in mind if you're running Red Hat or CentOS, AMIs or CentOS operating system, Red Hat is not going to support this one because this driver is not part of their uh, default kernel or default image. Maybe they will add this feature in 7.4, but I'm not sure. But this is something you can use at your own risk. Because as I mentioned, with ENA support, we are getting this particular speed. I don't want to demonstrate uh, how iperf work because I have already recorded a video in past on iperf. You can refer that video how you can use iperf to do networking test. So personally, I will recommend to go with ENA, but only thing if you got vendor support and vendor says that something on risk, you can't use uh, ENA with rev, then take decision at your end. But again, now uh, you have to take decision. I hope uh, this video helped you to know what is ENA, how you can enable it supports in Red Hat or CentOS operating system. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any query, any suggestion, or you want to share something, just uh, leave a comment on my YouTube channel, friends. Thank you. Bye-bye.